Hey everyone, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about how to use multi prompting in mid journey. I'm going to go over the basics and then in a future video, I'll discuss some more advanced techniques you can use with multi prompt. I've thought a lot about how to describe the difference between regular prompting and multi prompting. And I think it's something like this. A regular prompt is like reading the menu at a restaurant. You can see what's in the dish. But multi prompting is like the recipe that made the food. How much of each ingredient went into the dish. Does that make sense to you? Let's start with a simple meal and then we'll look at different recipes you can use to make it. So here we have pineapple. Two words that mean different things, but when combined together mean a totally new thing. I know it's supposed to be one word, but for this example, it'll make sense. You prompt pineapple, mid journey will give you a pineapple. That's the regular prompt. And multi prompting is when you'll split the prompt up with double colon. Like here, pine double colon apple. Adding double colons to your prompt tells mid journey to treat each part of the prompt separately. So if pineapple was 100%, pine double colon apple is 50% pine and 50% apple. It kind of turns it into a fraction, if you will, or the specifics of a recipe. 50% pine, 50% apple. I don't know if the cooking analogy is perfect, but I think it's the best way to visually represent how you could think about multi prompting versus regular prompting. Like in this picture, we do have an apple in number three and we kind of have an apple in number two, but it's 50% made of wood. It is an apple, but but it's also pine. It's not pineapple, it's pine and apple, right? But the main point of multi prompting is that now we can add weights to different parts of the prompt. Like how much of each ingredient do we want in the recipe? Like here we have pine double colon two and then apple, which means that pine is twice as important as apple. And therefore we don't really get an apple. We get pine tree, pine tree, pine cone, pine cone. In here we have pine double colon apple double colon in two, which means apple is twice as important as anything else in the prompt, which leaves us with something resembling four apples. Now weights might seem a little advanced, but they're basically the only reason you would use multi prompting. So I consider them part of the basics. But the most important thing you need to understand is that each weight is in relation to each other. I believe the correct phrase is normalized. The weights are normalized. We'll go back to this example. So when you don't include a number after the colons, it defaults to a weight of one. No number here means one. And a two after apple means two apple to one pie. And when I say the weights are in relation to each other, I mean that since this ratio is two to one, you could put a 10 after apple and a five after pine and you would get the same thing. Five to 10 is the same as one to two or 50 and 100. If you want to double the importance of one part of your prompt, you don't need to include a really high number. You just need to include a number that's double the rest. Do you know what I mean? Like nine to three is the same as three to one. And to be honest, you don't really need to go higher than a weight of three in any situation. Unless you were experimenting on super specific things, you can fit most ratios in between zero and three, right? Now let me teach you one last very important thing you need to know about multi prompting. When you're writing the prompt, you can leave a space between the word and the double colon. Pine space double colon apple space double colon two and you'll still get four things that resemble an apple because apple is twice as important. However, you cannot leave a space after the double colons or the weight does not mean anything. As you see here, maybe there's an apple in number three, but the rest are random. Like look at number four, that's just nonsense. So to help you remember that, I suggest not leaving a space after the word, write your word double colon and then the weight. It might look a little odd at first, but I think it'll help you remember the proper way to do it. Now I'm gonna show you a more practical approach that you might find yourself using more often. We're gonna keep it super simple, okay? We're gonna use the prompt, a dog made of stained glass, because those are two very identifiable things, which means we can use different amounts in our recipe and easily see the difference. A dog made of stained glass, boom, beautiful stuff. <laughs> I really like this type of prompt and that's just the regular prompt. However, we could split it with multi prompting and write dog colon colon made of stained glass, which is now 50% dog, 50% stained glass. I know I said when you don't include a number, it defaults to one, but even though each part of the prompt is weighted as one, it's still split, which means each part makes up 50% of the prompt, which is why I say half and half because one and one makes two. You know what I mean? And I think you can notice a difference already 
already, where it's not just a dog made of stained glass, it's either a dog, sure, or it's made of stained glass, which is why number four looks so different than the rest of them. In this next example, we'll take the first part of the prompt, a dog, and add a weight of 0.5. This is where the default weight of one might make sense to you, because before it was a dog one made of stained glass one. Now it's a dog 0.5 made of stained glass one, which means that the dog is now less important than made of stained glass, which is why in two of the pictures it's not even a dog because we told it that being made of stained glass is more important than it being a dog even though we have a dog in number one and i guess a dog in number three lowering the weight below one will tell the other part of the prompt that it's more important like here a dog with a weight of 1.5 made of stained glass still gives us what we were looking for but to mid journey the fact that it's a dog is more important than it being made of stained glass. Here it is with a weight of two. I like number one a lot. I think that is so gorgeous. It looks so real, as in like made in the real world. And this is why I said you don't really ever need to go to a weight above three, because around this point, a dog three made of stained glass, Mid Journey now knows that a dog is three times as important as anything else in the prompt. And therefore the rest of the prompt might start to get ignored. As you can see in number two, it's just a dog. I do like in number one and number three that it's sort of an artistic dog it's a dog made of something but it's a dog first in number four sure yes we get it made of stained glass but my point is anything around three to one you're going to start ignoring the one i would stick to around 2.5 as your highest weight that's just my recommendation to show you more examples of what tweaks to a recipe will give you now let's change the weight of the stained glass we have a dog made of stained glass 0.5 which means that a dog is important with a weight of one and now it being made of stained glass is less important one is beautiful two and three are what we'd expect but number four look it's it is a dog and then it kind of looks like it's made of stained glass but that's not stained glass it just has some properties of it now how would you get number four with regular prompting how would you describe that picture? I mean, technically we could upscale it and then use describe on it. I mean, stay tuned to the end if you wanna see how that works. And my point is, is that you might see a lot of really interesting pictures on Mid Journey. And I want you to know that they're not necessarily possible from regular prompting. Some people may have taken the time to really tweak the weights of their multi-prompt to get things you could never describe on your own. Here's a dog made of stained glass 1.5. Now it being made of stained glass is more important than it being a dog. Number one is pretty beautiful. Number two, maybe looks like a cat. Number four looks really real. And number three, I guess looks like a dog, but it's mostly made of stained glass. Here with the weight of two, you can already see Mid Journey ignoring the idea of a dog. Like number four is just some weird picture of stained glass. And when you get up to number three, you do get some nonsense, but look how beautiful number four is. So I've said you might want to stay away from a weight of three, but keep in mind it's not that that wrong to experiment with because you could get something beautiful. It's just that the odds of you getting what you're looking for drastically go down when you include weights of around three to one. There's your beginner overview to multi-prompting. Stay tuned for the master tutorial coming up soon. I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace. Okay, we asked Midjourney to describe this picture. It came up with four options. <laughs> I think it's off to a good start. A dog standing in a large room with a large amount of buttons, mosaic-like forms, body art, rich colors, natural fibers, colorful costumes, spherical sculptures, nature-inspired camouflage, made on buttons standing next to the camera, colorful assemblages, layered fibers, mosaic-like pattern, folk or naive, care of Caravagesque? Caravagesque? Caravagesque. Caravagesque. Dog is decorated with a colorful set of buttons. Nacho Carbonell, huge. And dressed up like a button, Rebecca Louise Law. Louise Law. But the absolute secret to using the describe feature is to image prompt the original picture with Mid Journey's descriptions. And look how good it is. These are. Here, there's the original. These are amazing. Also amazing. More amazing. Pretty hilarious. I'm glad we tried that. That is how you would describe that picture.